one thing that's perhaps less obvious about what folks should look for is UI, UX, like ask to really in the demos, click around, see how it works, understand how many steps does it take to do said process. And I want a good show, damn it. Show. You went awesome, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to talk to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. Welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. As usual, I am your host, Andrew Math, and today I'm joined by the amazing Pauline Shoes, the VP of Marketing over at Finale Inventory. Pauline, how are you doing? You ready for a good show? Everyone, good to hear. Good to see you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Yeah, super excited to have you on the show. Um, so I'm sure, as you know, I always start these off very stereotypically and just say like, hey, let's pretend no one knows who you are, even though, come on. Uh, so if you can give us a little bit of background, obviously, on yourself and a little bit about Finale Inventory, we're going to take it from there, okay? Sure. Hi, everyone. Like Andrew said, I am Pauline Shu with Finale, VP of Marketing over here. Uh, Finale, I, I sure hope you guys have heard of us. We've been around for 10 years now. In that time, we've helped thousands and thousands of brands scale their business just through efficient inventory management. Um, and while that sounds dull, it means that we're helping them stay profitable, stay in business and get ahead of the curve. And we're really here to, to scale and grow brands, um, helping them with obviously inventory, but also warehouses and operations in their warehouse. Beautiful. One of the reasons I'm very excited to have you on the show is because if I were to say uh, I'm an, um, a marketing expert, right? I've been doing this for years. Uh, and then I were to do the equivalent of that for operations, I would be uh, what's like, I've never heard of operations in my life. It's amazing how poorly I know anything about e-commerce operations. So having someone like you on the show, very excited to learn something because awesome. I don't know anything. So let's, uh, so let's back up real quick. So finale, obviously inventory management system. When I think of an inventory management system, e-commerce, especially there's like 5,000 marketplaces now in your own website. And then some people retail and all this stuff, your different exactly. warehouses, three PLs and all this all over the place. What is, what's your approach to that? Is that, um, obviously I know that's a big aspect of finale inventory, but like, give me a kind of a synopsis of like, how are these D2C brands leveraging you guys so much? Yeah, sure. So we absolutely play to omni-channel, right? So we do bricks, we do clicks, Preach. we do social. And so kind of the whole gamut and even from like supplier into finale out, we manage everything. Um, and we're really actually seeing more and more brands kind of become this true omni-channel piece. More and more are trying to bite off of the in-store, which is huge, because I would say just like five years ago, multi-channel was big, and that just meant web store marketplace, right? And then before that, mm -hmm. multi-channel was really big. That meant um, in-store online, like generic web store. And so the, the definition keeps evolving. And that's the whole point of Finale is having a platform, a software, a team that can scale with you. And that's what Finale does. We scale brands throughout, you know, orders of 100 orders a day. We literally have people who do 20,000 orders a day. So um, for, for the full thing, we're here to make sure that your business is totally running um, efficiently, profitably, and not just about the counts. The counts are really important. Don't get me wrong. All of your costs, right? All of that revenue is tied up in the inventory itself. Let's make sure it stays profitable. Years ago, uh, and I think I had mentioned this to you uh, before we started, years ago, I was involved in um, an inventory management company. So I know a little bit about like the SaaS side of it, how it worked. I have no idea. I was a marketing guy. I just had to make it look nice. So, but, uh, which I'm sure you kind of understand a little bit, yes. right? The, the, uh, the one thing that I remembered was like a constant question was there's a million nuances to every different business about pickback exactly. and shipping and what's going in what and how am I tracking inventory? And then if you're bundling, it becomes this whole thing. And I know with Amazon, that has become 
even more of a thing. That's and right. luckily I didn't have to, that was a customer service problem. So like, what is it, how is Finale Inventory approach that from like a customizable standpoint, considering all of these brands and these owners run their business like completely different? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I love it. You know, people conversely always ask us, what's the one industry you guys serve really well? And, and we don't have a good answer to that. We say all industries. And it's not this generic cop-out answer. It's truly because the way Finale works is that you can add in custom fields, custom columns, custom reporting, custom workflows, um, connect this data piece to this data piece. And because it's kind of that this data playground, if you will, right? Think of the jungle gym at, at the playground. It's just data points. And Finale is just connecting all those data points. So like you call it whatever you want to call that, that box of text, of numbers, whatever. And you just let us know how we talk to it on another screen and how we tie it into the reporting and it's done. And so, uh, yeah, we find that sellers come to us, sure, from competitors, yes, from spreadsheets, but really a lot of people find us when they're like, when they're like, I can't find anything else that works. It's too expensive to build something on your own. How can, like, there's gotta be something out there that connects the left hand and has it talk to the right hand. And that's where we watch how Finale solves it is through all the customizability within the platform and the reporting. The reporting's huge. So I was, I was just going to touch on the reporting. So thank you for a flawless segue. Um, so one of the things I was asked, so like, I, I, as I mentioned, like total novice. So I know that, you know, you can connect all your different marketplaces, your, your websites, all that fun stuff. But like outside of that, I'm blind. So like what other like major benefits do sellers get out of using a, a system like Finale Inventory? Sure. So it's getting ahead of your reorders, your restocks, right? All of that. Um, having your supplier information and getting automated purchase orders. So it's not even just, sure, send the purchase order out, but it's knowing what should you get, when should you get it, when should you be ordering it, tracking all of that throughout the process into your warehouse, understanding your COGS, your cost of goods sold, right? Accountants love Finale because we give a COGS calculation that just goes boop right into QuickBooks. And so again, it's about keeping your whole team in the loop between what's coming in, What's going out to FBA, to your point, right? Like, where do those shipments stand to get to FBA fulfillment centers? What's happening at Amazon's fulfillment centers? I feel like so many sellers, they kind of, you know, ship out the door. It becomes this, like, let's hope it gets there. Let's hope it's correctly. <laughs> let's see when that number updates in Seller Central. So, um, yeah, so we give that visibility to sellers to be able to track the data, track their products, and just know what's going on. Yeah. What what would you say is like the like the biggest problem that sellers have with inventory? Like I, to me, I know obviously during uh, COVID times we had the whole uh, supply chain issue and stuff getting backed yeah. up, and that was a whole different problem. Yeah. Yeah. But now that we've that's far past us, and yeah. we're back into more or less, I guess I can call these normal times. Um, what uh like what would you say is kind of like the biggest problem that sellers typically have with their inventory? Is it just knowing when to reorder or is it just managing it overall? Like what would you say that is? A lot of it is that visibility piece. Um, what do I have? What do I not have? When do I need to reorder? How much of it is there? And even like it's a lot of coordination. So again, um, you have you're you're gonna sell in TikTok shops, right? Sales on TikTok shops goes really fast. So yeah. you want to make sure that you have committed that inventory to TikTok shop or you've committed to FBA or you've committed it to some other sales promo on your shop or your website. Great. So it's being able to, you know, sell at the 24 seven pace of e-commerce while also doing kind of one-offs. We're able to account for the day to day, just let it normal motions in addition to special promos. Um, also, what don't sellers know? Sellers don't know how things are performing, how profitable they are. So, you know, a lot of the attention is always on ads, return on ad spend. But what about just like the profitability per your SKUs? That is so important, right? Your All of your money, all of your financing is for your inventory. Yes, you have staffing. Yes, you have advertising. Yes, you have some overhead costs. But your business, sellers as brands, as D2C companies, need inventory. And so being able to really monitor that profitability is tremendously important. And for Finale, that starts with being connected to suppliers, knowing the costs, knowing what's sold. And then again, knowing, do I need to sell more? Do I need to, I'm sorry, do I need to buy more now? What's that pace looking like? 
It's really just, again, data, timing, accuracy. Today's episode is brought to you by Finale Inventory. Meet Finale Inventory, the ultimate solution for accurate and efficient inventory management. Trusted by thousands of brands, Finale Inventory offers seamless integrations with over 80 sales channels and platforms. With customizable workflows and reporting features, Finale empowers you to streamline operations and scale your business with ease, preventing overselling and maximizing profitability. Whether you're juggling multiple platforms, expanding your product range, or just looking for a way to reduce operational chaos, Finale has the tools you need to succeed. Step into the future of e-commerce with Finale Inventory. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny hearing you say this because, like, it sounds very self-explanatory. Like, yeah, you should know the cogs, like, right? You should know when you need to order inventory. But it never ceases to amaze me when I talk to a seller yeah. and they're like, oh, I don't, it's like, I think it's around this. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what your yeah. cogs are? Like, how, <laughs> how are we supposed to figure out how to market it if I just don't have an unlimited budget and I can just maybe it's cogs or stock women in it? Some people do yeah. stock picks on like a quarterly, annually, monthly is like, eh, depending on your order flow, but mm. you can't do that. You know, you guys like all that dusty product in the warehouse, you're just paying for all that. And it's sitting there. Like it may not be FBA's warehouse, but you're still paying for that. Yeah. And it also seems simple, right? Okay. I got one product. I'm going to track this product through. Yeah, like, cool. As you know, sellers have hundreds, thousands of products. And to be doing this across sales channels, across thousands of SKUs, it's just not scalable, you know, without doing it through, through a system. System like Do you that. find it more necessary if someone has like hundreds or thousands of SKUs than if someone's just got like a handful? Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as businesses grow, the workflows are more complex, right? So adding more SKUs adds complexity. Adding more sales channels adds complexity. Adding more warehouses, going in-store, it all adds complexity because it it changes the workflow, right? So sure, you used to count five SKUs in your warehouse and it took you like a half hour, but try counting, right? Tens of thousands of square feet of your warehouse. Yeah. It's take a lot longer. That's a good point. I was thinking actually the, the um, I mentioned the supply chain issue with COVID, all that fun stuff that we dealt with. In the past, like, I guess we're what, 2024 now. So okay. we'll, we'll say we're probably a good two year, two, uh, yeah, about two yeah. years out of yeah. that hole. So. Has anything changed in inventory management? Like, did we learn anything from that? Like where, where are we at now versus where we were? That's interesting. Then? Yeah. I think that sellers are more savvy about their supplier relationships, really understanding, you know, yeah. so-and-so gives me a timeline of X, they commit to that timeline, right? That's huge. Being able to get it in on time is everything. Also costs, sellers are really mindful of, um, well, I can get a new supplier, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? Will they have that reputation? Is it worthwhile to stick with a supplier who may be a little bit more expensive, but they're reliable, right? Again, also um, Finale can help you track variants. And so what if you have a supplier who, great, he ships fast, it's all there. Oh, but wait a second, a third of it's broken, right? really keeping their suppliers in check is also really important because once it's in the door, you want to get that puppy listed, right? Okay. Let's not list puppies. You want to get that product listed. And so, you know, you don't have time to account for these one-off twosies, 10%, 20% of things that are lost, broken, whatever the reason is. So keeping that eye on your suppliers, keeping them accountable is huge. Yeah. We, um, as of, as of this recording, we just had, uh, uh, it wasn't today. I think it was last week. We just had an episode go out with the CEO of butcher box. And that was, that was basically, that was that guy's whole talk. And it was awesome. Like it was all about his relationships with his, uh, suppliers and I yeah. manufacturers him, but like, it's crazy how many people look for, Oh, I want the least expensive, uh, supplier out there. And that's, my favorite, one of my favorite, this is going to get tattooed on me one day. Cheap is expensive. And if you go with the least expensive person, you are probably going to pay for it in yeah. one way or another. And it always blows my mind how people go, are so, you you want to, you're stepping over uh, dollars to get the pennies kind of thing, right? And it's just an amazing, like, yes. I stand by that 100%. Quality over quantity any day across like all facets of life, by the way. So yes, yeah. absolutely. What about, um, 
So obviously, you know, we we talked about they've got hundreds of SKUs, thousands of SKUs. So they're a, they're in motion. They're a good size business. They're a good brand. What about the new guys? Like, how do the new guys like get themselves in a good position to make sure that as they start to scale, they're set up in a good way so that once they hit a certain number, they're not panicking and and sure. developing more complexities. Yeah, yeah. So. We have grown sellers from, let's just say, like a million so up to $75 million. It's pretty incredible. Um, and the thing that Finale does well, and the reason why what I would tell them to out for is a platform that can manage the data. Because, guys, I, I'm going to say data like 100 times in this podcast. I'm sorry already. Uh, <laughs> it's all about managing the data, right? Because once you, you you need that visibility, you need to understand um your, your sales orders data, really, really important. We work with other uh, partners in the e-com space, tech providers who have literally asked us to scale back in the data we send them because it's like clogging their systems down. But all of that is so important to sellers. So Andrew, your background, all these different points, we want to connect all of them together. And so, um, you know, being able to look at the timing for platforms, are they updating it hourly, daily? or up to the minute in real time, really important. Like having teams on the same page about what, what's going on with their products and sales, orders, fulfillment, everything is really important. And so having reporting dashboards, obviously we've talked about customization, right? Um, you as the brand owner, you wanna look at things differently than the person who's fulfilling the packages in the warehouse and everyone in between. Your finance person is looking at things differently. Your um, listings person also, right? Uh, if, if your listings person is selling multi-channel and is running a promotion, then they need to make sure and trust that the numbers in the warehouse are reflecting what's on the website, what's on in Amazon, et cetera. Um, and so being able to have reporting between your teams also really important as people scale. Yeah. There is, I don't even know the number. There are so many inventory management companies out there um some uh, very small some are newer but like what would you say what obviously i'd love to know like what the big differentiator is for finale inventory but then also like when sellers are going to pick one of these like because eventually they hit a wall and they're like you've got to have it especially if you're in multiple marketplaces or retail like what's the criteria like what am what am i looking for based i know every brand's going to have something different but what type of nuances am i looking for Sure. Yeah. Again, it's it's these timing syncs. When is that information getting updated? So multi-channel syncs, is it happening hourly? Mm, that, that could be okay. Or is it happening in real time? The other thing that's also support sellers, you know, not everyone's in tech. You're, you're selling brands as a business. And so how is the support? How is that company able to help your team when they really need it? Black Friday, talk about sustainability, Cyber 5. I would also ask about uptime and reliability, you know? Do you provide SLAs? Are you able to confirm that your product is there for me when I need it? Um, we talk about keeping suppliers accountable, right? It's the same thing. Keep, keep your software providers accountable. Make sure that they're gonna be there for you. Um, and obviously the, the thing that's really easy is, you know, make sure the pricing works, make sure the integrations are what you need. Um, sales channels, web stores, fulfillment partners, what have you. And I think the one thing that's perhaps less obvious about what folks should look for is UI, UX, like ask to really in the demos, click around, see how it works, understand, you know, how many steps does it take to do said process, look at your orders, you know, cycle count, issue a purchase order, et cetera, because I think a lot of folks are surprised when they get into software, go through training, sure, fine. And then like, wait a second, this wasn't as easy as the guy did on the demo, right? Cause he's used to it. He's like buzzing around, he's got shortcuts, but um, kind of that, that uptime and the ease of use is also really important, especially as you train new team members, right? So you're starting small, you're growing, which means you're adding on team members, being able to have new staff that can learn software quickly Again, in the office or in the warehouse, really important. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good point on the UX thing. I've gotten rid of software before because I'm like, I know it does something cool, but I can't find it and I give up. Like it's hideous yeah. and it just doesn't work. It's a very you good point. I didn't think about that. Documentation <laughs> and support, being able to actually use the software. Like the feature set is cool. Good. Those are good checkmark items, 
But as you dig in deeper and deeper, how does it actually work? What what is the workflow within the software? Yeah, what about globally? Like, how, how does that does that change anything? Like, what happens once? Obviously, you get into different marketplaces, different you know retail and all that fun stuff. But now you're like, okay, now we're going to start you know selling overseas. Like, where does that kind of get sure. involved? Yeah, in changes that would definitely come into like. In my opinion, it's more on the currency side, the valuation side, the financial mm-hmm. side, right? So yeah. if you buy it in whatever dollar unit, but you're selling it out, kind of that conversion for it listed in the US at $10, but it's listing in Europe for like twelve fifty, being able mm-hmm. to kind of reverse engineer all that math to understand, like, what does that come out to in the US? Um, because candidly, a warehouse location can be a virtual warehouse like FBA, it can be an actual warehouse. And so wherever that warehouse is located, that's kind of like here nor there to a degree. Um, I would also say that potentially, you know, when, when you have a pick and pack list and you're fulfilling orders, we're gonna call it something in English. We're gonna call it gray elephant, tusk up, whatever you got going in the background there on your desk. Thanks. But in but in Spanish and French, like. I don't know these words, but it'd be something else, right? So um, (laughs) being able to have that transparency, again, that relation in language, in in the currency, et cetera, it's a big deal. Yeah. What about from the warehousing side? Like the whole like barcoding thing, once it actually comes in, they scan it. Like how does that get fed directly into Finale? Where does that? Yeah, yeah. We love this question. Thank you for asking. So um, (laughs) Finale actually runs our own barcoding software program. Uh, We also have, you know, relationships with some manufacturers where the software is directly downloaded onto the scan gun. And so for Finale, it just means that you have your product IDs and you have your barcode, you know, ID numbers as well. And so when you scan the barcode, it automatically syncs to Finale. And the cool thing is that it's not just for picking and packing. A lot of, you know, e-com barcoding solutions will handle the pick and pack. But again, we're looking at the full workflow. When you receive your items in from your supplier, right, do all your scans and figure out, do you have the right products and do you have the right amount? This goes back to, again, keeping your suppliers accountable. Did you send the right things? Did you send the, the right amount? Okay, great. Check. We got that. Now you're in the warehouse or gal in the warehouse. I've seen many a stock photo with women smiling as well. So, you know, shout out to all you guys. Um, When they go to put it on the shelves, it's scanning to make sure it's in the right location. So again, I have this chapstick, great. I need to make sure this goes to aisle three, shelf two, bin 12. I don't know, whatever it is. So I'm gonna scan it and then it's gonna show up on the scan gun, do 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 where to go it will literally navigate and walk me around the warehouse to get me in the right place. And then you scan the bin boop, and put it in. So now Finale knows that this bin now has one more, 10 more, 12 more, whatever units of your products. That's the receiving. I think pick and pack is pretty clear. We know how kind of how that works. Yeah. Verifies your orders. You've picked the right things and then out the door. So it just really improves it. It improves the workflow because it makes everyone more efficient and accurate. Accuracy is the key. Yeah. Is that is that a scenario when someone has their own warehouse or is that kind of a similar situation if they're using a 3PL? Oh, great question. So that's definitely the scenario if someone has their own warehouse. Yeah. I do have to also say that Finale, um, Finale users include 3PLs. So 3PLs use Finale to manage other sellers' products and mm-hmm. also the finale, you know, barcoding system, barcoding, including the software as well as labels. So being able to print custom labels. Yeah, sure. We do the generic barcodes. We do QR codes, but even, you know, like package labels, prop hazardous, prop warnings, ingredients, um, you know, calling out different promotions, whatever you want, get creative. Someone even uses our QR codes as shelf talkers in their retail store. So they have the barcode to transact. And they have like a learn more QR code on the label in store. And that QR code from Finale just takes them to their Shopify store to learn more information. So again, you can, you can do so many things with the, with the technology uh, out of the box or kind of getting creative like that. It's awesome. Pauline, 
thank you so much for being on the show. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, obviously, I would love to give you the opportunity to let everyone know where they can find out more about you and obviously more about Finale Inventory. For sure. Yeah. Uh, find me on LinkedIn, uh, Pauline Shu, S-H-I-U with Finale. Uh, and then, yeah, definitely come and visit finaleinventory.com. Check out our demo, challenge us on our UI, talk to our team. Our US-based team is one of the, like, the best acknowledged in the, comp- in the, in the industry. I sincerely say that. Um, and when you talk to them, mention the promo code ECOM2024, E-C-O-M-M-2024, um, and you will get 20% off your first three months with Finale. Um, our pricing is pretty transparent. It's also very competitive in the industry. It's all on the website. You can check it out there. Beautiful. Pauline, thank you so much. Obviously, everyone who tuned in, thank you as well. Please make sure you do the usual rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff on whatever podcast platform you prefer or head over to the ecomshow.com to check out all of our previous episodes. But as usual, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker a full-service digital marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of The Ecom Show.